Hi. How are you doing, Becky? Hi, Stuart. I'm good, thanks. How are you? I am not doing too bad. Those Skype updates, you've got to love them. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry about that. It took forever <laughs> to bloody upload the thing, so it's all sorted now, though. <laughs> No, it happens all the time. I've many, many a time I think, right, well, I'm recording in 10 minutes, so I'll just put the laptop on. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when an, up, up, that's when an update comes. Exactly. At the worst time, so I do apologise for that. But it's good to be Not chatting to you, finally. <laughs> it is. No, exactly. I mean, do you remember the days when Sunday afternoons used to be just, you know, lying on the sofa watching movies? Sounds like you've had a busy Sunday as well. <laughs> yeah, no, I have. I have had a busy Sunday. But, you know, it's a chance to get stuff done, isn't it? Um, it is the weekend, yep. so tie some things up and sort some stuff out. So yeah, it's all good, all productive. <laughs> exactly. I was looking at your filmography. I've looked at it before, but I thought I'll just look at it just before. You've had one hell of a busy couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's been really good. Yeah, like I'm really grateful for how busy I've been actually. Um. So yeah, it's been it's been really good, really good fun. Uh, no sign of that slowing down? Hopefully not. Like, I mean, you never know what's going to be around the corner, but I try and keep myself as sort of busy as possible. Um, so hopefully it will continue. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Now, yeah, I was watching some of your YouTube things this morning because you've done some interviews about Fox Trap, etc. But have you been on podcasts before? Or is it the first? No, it's my first one. Yeah. So it's all exciting. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're easy enough. Uh, I don't know who the powers that be behind the production Twitter is, but they, they obviously sent the email out to, I think, every cast member they've ever worked yeah, with. Yeah, no, it was, I uh, saw it was the chain, wasn't it? There's was quite a few, I think they were kind of the key characters in some of the films that were put into it, so, yeah. yeah. Definitely. So I saw that email come through and it used the word interview, and it's like, oh God, I hate the word interview. <laughs> Suddenly the press is on. I did one the other week with a lady called um, Pollyanna McIntosh, and she sent me a, an email through. She's been in, if you haven't ever seen the film, The Woman, watch it. It's amazing. Yeah. It's a bad really, yeah. It's, it's on Netflix, and Pollyanna plays a woman who is, she's a, a sort of roaming cannibal, and somebody catches her and decides, I'm going to, um, what do you call it, civilize her, and I'm going to lock her up in my cellar and just keep her as a pet. And she does an amazing job on that. It's, it's quite a tough film to watch, but... Looking at your filmography, you are quite a horror fan. Yeah, 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 I am, yes. That sounds sounds quite harrowing, actually. But, yeah, it's, it's really good. It's really, really good. And she sent me an email through, and she said, right, what sort of questions will you be asking? I went, I ain't got a clue. No idea. It's not the way I work. I don't sit here with show notes or anything like that, other than a filmography open. Yeah. So it's uh, it's just a case of say whatever you want. If you end up saying something you think, oh, really shouldn't have said that, yeah. just let me know afterwards. I'll click that. <laughs> but, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, God, I am a bit of a blabber mouth, so I don't know what will end up coming out of my mouth, so I do apologise in advance, but yeah. No, it's fine. And usually about 10 minutes into the conversation, you go, right, are we are we starting now? You're like, we were starting the moment you said hello. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Oh, yep. So that's not too bad. <laughs> so a, qu- a quick question as well. Is Fifty Shades of Elise known as the domino effect, or are we still not sure which title? Because it confuses me sometimes. Each time I go looking for something, I'm like, what's it under? Oh, it seems to be going under. <laughs> it confuses me as well, yeah. But um, no, yeah, it's it's two different titles, so they're both working titles, and it'll all cool. depend on the distributor, which one they want to go with. Um, but those were just kind of the initial, um, the script working titles, I believe. So I think, knowing distributors, they'll probably go, we like the Fifty Shades yeah. of Elise. <laughs> well, <laughs> who, who, who can wonder why they would possibly go for that title? Yeah, but... No, well, you can imagine with that what it's kind of about and what the film's going to be about. So, yeah, maybe they will go with that one. But And there is a sizzle reel on YouTube as well, and never has a, a, a phrase <laughs> sizzle reel applied more than, <laughs> than the trailer for that one. Yeah, we got a lot of good feedback about that, actually. Yeah, I don't, I don't I can't imagine why. I don't, <laughs> no, yeah, um yeah, no people have responded to it really well. Um so hopefully it'll be something that people want to see and you know when we actually get around to finishing it, we've still got a few days to shoot of it. It'll, it'll get put together quite quickly and should hopefully be out and available to watch soon. So it's one to look out for hopefully. The first film I saw you in was Deadly Waters. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> which I saw, I think it was late last year when I watched that one. And how difficult was that to do? Because, uh, I mean, it's, I think it's at least November since I watched it, but you have no dialogue in that, or very little dialogue, if I remember rightly enough. How hard was that to... <laughs> um, 
to do? It, it was it was different. Um, it was yeah, a different kind of challenge to what I'd been used to. But I've kind of done a lot of physical theatre and stuff before, so it was just kind of using those skills, I guess, in in the role. But it was really interesting how how physical yeah it was um and yeah I think I have one line in it and it's all the line is is no so I just say the word no once in the whole entire film but um yeah I pop up quite a lot actually in the end it was actually I was in quite a lot of scenes so yeah yeah yeah, it was it was challenging I was having to like do a lot of roaring noises and growling and being quite animalistic as well so it was kind of I didn't really see myself as a human in in that film it was more like kind of you know, animal behaviour that I looked into and stuff like that. So it was a lot of facial expressions and the actings in the eyes and, and all that sort of yeah. stuff and that. It's really it was a weird film to watch because obviously you're you're the siren, you're enticing the, the main guy into mm. whatever you wish to entice. But as the audience watching it, we're kind of hypnotized by you as well. It's kinda of weird. It's <laughs> it, it it weird in a good way, but it was like, damn, you you were very hypnotic in that Oh, role. thank you. Which I guess is the whole point. That's what you were aiming for. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm glad it came across that way then because I guess when when you're on my side of it doing it and it's kind of a bit out of the ordinary and it's, it's kind of a little bit weird at points. You're like, how oh, is this coming across? And, you know, you don't really know, I guess, until people have watched it and kind of given you their feedback. So that's it's good. I'm glad it worked anyway. <laughs> and how, how has the feedback been? Yeah. On that, I've seen some glowing reviews for you and quotes and stuff, which uh, yeah. is wonderful. No, yeah, I wasn't really expecting any of it. And um, like you say, because I kind of didn't really have a lot to say, um, so it was nice that, yeah, I got some kind of nice comments from people who had watched it um, in the end. It was really good. Yeah, like I say, I wasn't expecting it, so it was it was lovely. It's always nice to, to hear good things, so it's good. <laughs> Are you are you one of these act? Uh, that's this is another question as well because it's been driving me up the wall for weeks. <laughs> do do you prefer actor or actress or not necessarily? It's been driving me up the wall. What you prefer, but it's just generally is it the day and age where actresses are now known as actors or is it still in between or? Yeah, do you know what? I don't really have a personal preference. Um, I just kind of see acting as a thing, and you know. <laughs> I guess, yeah, an actress is a female actor, so you can go down. Yeah. But if someone was to call me an actor, I wouldn't really get too offended by it because we're all doing the same job at the end of the day. So, Or the other way around, you wouldn't get offended going, how do you call me an actress? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, no, absolutely not. Yeah, like, they're both the same to me. But I, I can kind of see the argument why some people would want to be preferred being an actress to an actor. I, I do understand, but for me, it's not really too much of an issue. So... Yeah, I'm sort of of the thing where I think everybody should just be actors because it seems to be every time you look at a website, you look at a Twitter feed, somebody's on about labelling somebody or else and there's a big argument about somebody being labelled or yeah. it's like, just just be done with it. Just have one big Oscar category where you've got men and women in it. Oh, that would be and, interesting. And be yeah, yeah. To have, you mean just like, yeah, just it's about the role and it, it's not, oh, that is interesting. I've never I think so. I had, this, I had this conversation with another podcaster last year podcasters generally do awards at the end of the year to go best film worst film and so on mm. and he had best actress and and best actor and i said just do it all as one he went no no it wouldn't work i'm like why would it not work it would work he said no because then it'd be filled with men i'm like have you even seen some of the actresses out there he didn't say that did he, oh, he did. oh yeah that's not good that's... he did yeah i guess you have the you obviously i don't know women and can play certain roles to what men can't and men can play certain roles to what totally. can't of course so I guess maybe having them in separate categories is obviously ideal in that sense but it is interesting that you could have a combination of men and women in the same category I've never I've never known that's happened before so that easily I mean the, the guy who said that I don't think he's probably ever seen a Meryl Streep movie or oh. you know Ju- Julianne Moore on screen or, yeah. or anything fantastic fantastic actresses yeah out there like so phenomenal yeah really really great so yeah no I don't know what he's talking about <laughs> <laughs> half the time I don't think he knows what he's talking about so it's fine I do spend many an hour ridiculing him on some of the podcasts so <laughs> he's he's one of these that'll watch a film and you'll come out and he'll have 10 negatives I, I'll forget the negatives and I'll come out with 20 positives. Yeah, I, so, yeah, you've got to look at it that way. 
Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got, hopefully, two films at least coming out this year. I know you've got Fox Trap, which hopefully is out, which I believe you're enjoying the action scenes in that one. Oh, yeah, they were great. Yeah, it was really good. And um, we had this huge manor house that we were filming in, so it was just a great location to play with and to run about screaming and, you know, doing your horror thing. It was just so much fun. But, yeah, there was a lot of, lot of drama, a lot of action and stuff in that. So it was really good fun to do. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Good. <laughs> now you play Frankie in that one, don't you? Yeah, yeah. The character's Frankie. Yeah. Yeah. Now is it right that you sort of you have a bunch of friends, you move away from those friends, and then the, the, you meet back up with them at a reunion, mm -hmm. and that's where the plot thickens. Yeah, yeah. Um, with Frankie's character, um, basically, I don't want to give away too much, but at the beginning of the film, this incident happens, and it causes her to be sort of distant from the group. And it kind of divides her from them all. Um, so when they come back together at the reunion, it's years and years later. So obviously um, Frankie's been absent from their, their group for that long. So when she comes back into it, and in the same case as some of the others, like uh, people haven't seen each other for a while. So it's, it's a very sort of tense tense moment when they all come back together again and they're kind of getting used to each other and who they are now and what's happened in between um so it's yeah yes i was it was cool to play with everybody to kind of get that dynamic and kind of come my character as a bit of an outsider that was nice as well to kind of play with now with that do you put yourself in any sort of method thing where you think oh, i'm going to stay away from all the cast even when we're not filming just so i can <laughs> do it or are you just Hi guys, right now we're shooting, right now we're an outsider. No, you know what, I, I did kind of distance myself and keep myself away. Um, I don't know if I was trying to do it deliberately, it did help. Um, obviously I wasn't going to be a complete, you know, bitch or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Just sort of, you know, keep away and be all, you know, moody and stuff with them. I wasn't going to do that. Like we all got on really, really well, but yeah, I did kind of keep myself away but I don't know if that's just because when I've got a bit of spare time I, I do like to sort of keep myself away and go over my work and my lines and just refresh myself anyway so I think that kind of naturally just took me into a little corner where I was just sort of on my own doing my own stuff um but yeah it it did kind of help to, to especially if I knew we were going to be filming a lot of like sort of heavy scenes during the day or you know, the difficult scenes where I've got a lot going on with one of the other actors and the other characters and it would be helpful to just kind of step out of it and, you know, do your own thing um, to kind of get in that mindset, I suppose, yeah. You could have got away with being horrible to everybody else and just blame it on, hey, it's, you know, it's just my acting method, it's fine, <laughs> yeah. it's what I do. I'm just throwing out that card all the time. <laughs> Yeah, it could blow up in your face for your next projects when you're like, I don't want to worry yeah. Becky again. Oh, yeah. She was horrible. Oh no, no, yeah, you got to be, you got to be a, a team on shoots like that, you know, indie shoots and where everyone's kind of chipping in and helping with other roles and stuff as well. So yeah, everyone was kind of on each other's side, which was nice. Because these are sort of low budget movies, aren't they? Generally, most films, unless it's a Bond film or a Harry Potter film in Britain, I think everything is low budget now. So it's... Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of uh, low budget indie stuff around, and you know, it's all it's all great stuff, and it's really nice to be a part of because you, you do have that, you know, unity, and it usually is smaller teams that you're working with, so everyone kind of gets to know each other really, really well, and you understand each other's roles, I think, really well because you see everything that's happening and, you, like I said, quite often you, you're helping chip in with stuff um, that's not really your area, but you just do it anyway because you've got this sort of camaraderie thing going on with the group. So they are really nice, you know, projects to work on and they're really enjoyable. You often come away having made a lot of friends, so it's always nice. I was on set for a werewolf film called Bad Moon Rising, which is in post-production last last March, I think it was. And I was just there for a day. They pretty much said, come down and be part of a crowd scene if you want. I'm like, all right. And, but everybody was there, you know, from the director to the makeup. Everybody was just, and the extras were all moving boxes and tidying up. And yeah. like you say, the camaraderie. I think if you go on a bigger set, like, I don't do that. I'm the director. I'm the writer. Yeah. Get the box mover to do it. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, you're completely right, yeah, like, it, it can be like that, but as you say, everyone just kind of helps, don't they, and chip in, and, yeah, if there's a sort of, uh, at the end of the day, when everyone needs to move the equipment from being outdoors and an outdoor shoot to inside or whatever, everyone's helping, so, 
It is nice. Everyone gives each other, you know, a bit of help and a pat on the back, which is good. Exactly. <laughs> there's, there's no room for divas on low-budget films. This is oh, not oh, oh, my gosh, no. I'll be dealing with that. And this werewolf movie sounds cool. I'd totally love to be a werewolf one day. It was. Yeah, no, it was fun. It was, um, I mean, I started off just doing podcasts like this, chatting with friends and what film have you watched and was it any good and blah, blah, blah. And then decided I'm going to start doing a British movie podcast because I, I live in Britain. I should watch more British films, really. <laughs> I thought it won't be that hard. There can't be that many British independent films. Boy, was I wrong. Oh, yeah, there's so <laughs> many all the time. Millions. Yeah. Now to the point where if I have a list of about 60 films that I've watched in a couple of months and somebody said, right, what have you watched? And I'll go through the list. But I've never heard of any of those. It's like, well, <laughs> you know, I know. But no, the werewolf one was fun. And um, I think it was a thank you for doing a lot of the PR for them. They said, oh, come down and, you know, be part of a crowd. But I ended up maybe three or four scenes. So hopefully mm -hmm. I've made the um, made the final yeah, cut. You'd have to let me go. Like I'd love to see you in it and spot you in the crowd. You'd have to let me well, I've got... I've got three coming out this year. I was in three movies last year, and none of them have come out yet. So it looks like they're all going to come out this year. Really? Um, oh, all in one, one hit. That'll be nice. All, all in one hit. There was one called Witch, which was the first one I was uh, – not The Witch. Everybody's sending me messages going, oh, so it's on the cinema, that film you read. I'm like, no, it's a different film. <laughs> it's a different film. Um, and then I was in Bad Moon Rising, and then I was on set in this paranormal documentary thing where they were chasing ghosts, which was a lot of fun. Um, other than the fact the second day in, I went down some stairs and broke my ankle, but carried on the entire shoot oh, without goodness. seeking medical attention for the next 11 days. Oh, goodness. So That's it was cool. all, that, it, well done. Oh, it hurt. And I was the one with the boom pole as well, carrying the thing, so it's not easy to run around oh, no. with one of them with one busted ankle. Oh, gosh, but, no. That's a nightmare. Oh, dear. But... You're through point. it though. That is a great work carrying on. I'm sure they all appreciated that. that. <laughs> they <did> better. <laughs> if it's a sequel, I ain't going to be in it. Break the other angle. <laughs> so, how on earth do you prepare for something like the domino effect? Is that harder to prepare for than um, Fox Trap, which you've got action roles? Do you know? Um... It's very, very... Well, both characters that I play in each film are so different. So, um, with Foxtrap, again, I don't want to give too much away, but there were so many layers to, like, the character I played, Frankie. Like, so many. Like, that's the, the most in-depth I've ever had to go with a character. Um, so that was really, really difficult. I did feel out of depth at some points, but, um, you know, I had a lot of help and support like preparing for the role and on set you know getting through it and like rehearsing with the other actors they were always happy to rehearse with you know each other and it was really nice so I that was really really difficult um in terms of that but yeah domino effect is yeah completely different character it's quite nice because um at least the character I play in that is sort of a very a glamorous character and men look quite nice all the time and you know he's quite girly feminine um but she has a nice arc where she starts off quite vulnerable and then gets really strong towards the end um so that was nice to play in contrast to Frankie who's kind of got the, all these burdens and these troubles on her so she's kind of a very troubled person but she's always kind of the hero throughout and she's the one who doesn't want to leave people behind and stuff um so they're both completely different um but yeah you just I don't know I guess I just I, I do a lot of script analysis and stuff and you know like understanding the story and the arc of the story is 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 key before you even look into your character and you see how it fits into that and you know, I did like a lot of sort of workshop stuff on it, um, but yeah, it's it's all it's all not, it's all the, the fun part. I think exploring your character and doing your character biographies and your character timelines and stuff. Um, I did a lot of prep with some of the actors prior to filming Fox Trap, so I met up with the character who plays. Um, I mean, sorry, the actor who plays my character's boyfriend in it because we've got a lot of scenes together. So um, Richard and I met up before shooting and kind of discussed our relationship in depth. And I did the same with a couple of the other characters. Um, so that was always helpful as well because you can kind of work together on that and then you know where you're at in the story when it comes to shooting. So all that kind of preparation is really helpful. 
and all the filming is done for Foxtrap? Yeah, it was all done. Um, yeah, we, we, we shot in three weeks uh, in January and it's all completely been finished in that time. We actually finished a day early, so we were all like shocked <laughs> that we wrapped earlier because that never, ever happens. Nope. Um, so yeah, um, that's all thanks to our first day I think Shelley she was like fantastic with the schedules and stuff um so yeah we we finished shooting end of January so it's in the edit now as we speak very nice right? do you do you like watching back the films that you're in oh um you know when I first started watching stuff back I think everyone's the same you do just cringe a bit don't you because it's like oh gosh it's it's me on screen get get me off yep. like I do always like cringe a little bit um but you, i think yeah you get more and more used to it as as you see yourself on stuff um i i'm very overcritical of myself so i'm always like picking out the bad things i think first whenever i watch something but then on the second time of watching it you just kind of see it for what it is as a whole and you appreciate it a little bit more but that first viewing's always a, a bit of a dread <laughs> So you're not going to be like, right, I'm terrible, scrap the film, let's redo it. <laughs> you're not that critical, I hope. Oh, no, hopefully not. <laughs> no, no. I mean, redo it. Yeah, no. no, I'm sure Like, I'm sure it's going to look really fantastic. I've seen bits of it and some, you know, um, clips of it being put together and stuff, and it's all looking really, really good. So it's exciting to see what it'll look like as a, as a whole. Who was the first person outside of the cast and crew that you showed Deadly Waters to? And, and did that make you nervous, going, right, I'm going to show them a film? You know what, I think it was some of some family and friends, I think, that saw it first. And, yeah, that's even more nerve-wracking, I think, you know, when it's people you know. I think that's more scary because they know you as you and then they're seeing you on screen as a different character. And I don't know, I think you, you want to impress them more in a way because you want to show them what you, what you can do and what you've been up to and what what is the project you've actually been working on that they've known about is now kind of being showcased to them so yeah it's always really really scary um I've got I'm thankful I've got friends and family who are really quite honest with me if something's kind of not right they'll they'll say it but I really appreciate that for for critique so um yeah I guess that's another reason because I know they're just gonna tell me what they think which is which is good in a way but you know if it, if it was ever bad they were, I know I'd be getting I'd be getting told <laughs> so it's always nerve-wracking I guess to see how they're gonna react well hopefully you never get that head shake with the like yeah. really how long did you spend on that for no that's mean yeah, yeah. Uh, no. Hopefully you never get that. No, hopefully not. No, I haven't had it yet. Hopefully not. No, I, th- I think they'd they'd let me down nicely if if, if they were to ever say anything. But no, they've liked everything so far. So. Well, they should because if you look, I mean, even if you just look at the three roles <laughs> that that I've seen bits from, so Fox Trap, Deadly Waters. I've actually seen some of Lucifer's Night as well. So that's technically that's four. Yeah. Um, it's a massive range of stuff for you. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's been really, really great. Like. The, the difference in roles has been fantastic. It's what every kind of actor, actress, as we were saying, mm-hmm. wants to, to do is be able to play. Well, me especially, I just want to play as many different kinds of things as as possible. So each film's been different and each, each character's been really different as well. So I'm very lucky. Is there any type of role where you that you would dread somebody saying, right, we want to give you this one. For me, I mean, I'm, I'm not an actor by any means, but if somebody said, right, what to be the musical? I'd be like, oh, no, <laughs> I, can't do it. I can't do it. Anything else I'd probably try, but musicals, not that. <laughs> oh, music, I could, you could be great. I think you'd be great. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I do. I, I would never, ever do a shark movie because I've got a terrible phobia of sharks. It's really weird. Like, I can't even look at pictures or videos or anything of them because i'd just have a panic attack what well, what was it like when you first got this sort of offer for deadly waters and you're like this better not be a shark movie <laughs> yeah was like, there be no sharks in this um yeah i only had to go in the ocean for that a couple of times and it was always shallow and it was in brighton so i, I wasn't at any risk of any any sharks going to get me but yeah like if it was like a jaws type thing where there was going to be robotic sharks or there was going to be shark cgi'd in or something i just wouldn't be able to i just i no money in the world i don't think anything or as great as the role would be would ever entice me to do a shark film because i'd just i'd be so scared <laughs> just so like so spielberg phones you up tomorrow <laughs> and he's like 
I saw you in Lucifer's Night and I want you to be in Jaws 5. You're like, no. I honestly don't think I could. I'd have to go and get some serious therapy about shark phobias before I can... I could... Wow. Honestly, I, you don't understand how scared I am of them. It's all... Oh, I could probably write them spiders. They get me. Yeah. I'm not a fan of spiders, but <laughs> spiders are far less dangerous than sharks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. It, even if it was like a fake one, and I, obviously everyone knows it's fake, but I just, oh, God, I don't know. That would be um, kind of a no-no, I think, for me. You just know that somebody from Proportion Productions is listening to this now, yeah. and they're going, "Just get get me that shark script." <laughs> oh, some of them send me pictures on WhatsApp of sharks on purpose because they know it scares me. So I, I already get it. I already get it all the time. Wow. I know. Just just tell them if they stop sending you shark. <laughs> If they keep sending you shark pictures, you're going to quit. Yeah. You know, just... I'm done, I'm done. Yeah, no, I will. I might threaten them with that one. <laughs> ah, exactly. Oh. So, yeah, so no shark pictures. Anything else? Would you be all right with a musical? Yeah, I did a little bit of singing when I was younger. So if I had the training or had the time to prepare for it, then, yeah, I, I totally love to do a musical. Yeah, nice. yeah, I love them. Um, hmm. Which do you, this is kind of like an interview, I guess. I'm just firing random questions at you. <laughs> uh, which do you sort of prefer, prefer shooting, feature length or short films? Because you've done quite a few short films as well, haven't you? Done a, yeah, yeah, a couple. Yeah, a few. But um, I do prefer features just because the projects are longer, so you get to work on it for a, a greater amount of time. Um, and, you know, if you're playing a, a, a leading role or you're one of the supporting roles in it, you... You get to, I think, explore, yeah, like I say, more of an arc and you get to go through the character development a little bit more because it's a longer script or it's a longer story. So I think for that reason, yeah, I do prefer features. Mm. Definitely. I can't imagine Deadly Water working as um, a short. <laughs> yeah, I know. It'd be a lot to cram in in, in four, 20 minutes. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. People just be like, who's this weird siren weird monster thing popping up now and then <laughs> it would but I mean, not even now and then it'd just be a one time for like now wouldn't it <laughs> yeah yeah it's like what's that noise it's a siren hello siren oh end <laughs> credits yeah, yeah we'll... <laughs> exactly done yeah no i do yeah i prefer features yeah obviously if there's there's a great you know, short film role available and you know it's, yeah. it's a good project would never turn it down but yeah if you have the choice features i think Exactly, and if it was a short film about sharks, then definitely. <laughs> a short film about sharks, oh gosh, make me think of the scary things now. <laughs> would it be okay if you were killing sharks? Is that all right? <laughs> just, or would you just prefer just they stay in the water, I'll stay out of the water, it's fine? Yeah, yeah. Like, living like life. Yes, yeah, I think you just prefer to not look at them and not see them and just be as distant from them as possible, then I'm, I'm good, Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So, I mean, I've had a lot of dealings with whoever is the one typing behind the proportion productions. I have no idea who it is, but it's they're sort of elusive and they'll just pop up now and again with like a link to a trailer or a or an IMDb thing or something. So, whoever they are, they're awesome. Um, but what what are propor- proportion productions? Try to say that really fast. Uh, like to work for? I'm guessing good because you work with them several times. Yeah, yeah, really, really great. Um, there's kind of a, a a team behind Proportion that um work together and collab on various projects, and yeah, they're really, really great. Um, they just get stuff done. Like they they have great ideas, and I think um they're kind of they're getting more and more sort of budget and stuff behind them as well so they're able to take on more challenging sort of stuff now um because the end of the day for indie like, you know having bigger budgets and stuff always always does help but yeah they're, they're just great like the stories are always interesting um the person who does all the writing there's a couple of people who do the writing all the time just have such a good eye for horror and for thriller genres which are kind of my favorite so that's always great to have, work on scripts like that um and yeah, I always find this is something a little bit unique about the stories that they do. And yeah, like I say, you, you can be shooting stuff with them, they'll get it done. And then you'll see a, quite a really quick turnaround with, you know, the editing and everything like that. It's just always kind of met 
really quickly. So I've been working on projects before, and you know, you film something and then <clears throat> you don't see it. <laughs> you don't see what, what happened to it or where it's been or anything for like a year or even more. And you just kind oh, of, yeah. what happened to this film I did ages ago? But they seem to just kind of get their projects done, and they're really nice people. So it's, it's they're great to work with, yeah. Oh, you're definitely right about the increase in quality as well because of the the way that I've watched them. So Lucifer's Night 2014, <laughs> Deadly Water 2015. I've seen clips or the sizzle reel from the domino effect and you can just see it being glossier and glossier and glossier, which is the way it's supposed to be with any filmmaker, isn't it? You don't want to see it going in the reverse. Yeah. No, That'd be kind of scary. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and like, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. It's Every single one has kind of been progressed and progressed and everything's sort of getting better and increasing every time and with Foxtrap it's just looking top notch so it's really like kind of been every film's really like leapt leaps and bounds and and got better so it's just great yeah it's good to see the progression it is Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's good to be along for the ride as well, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're like, see, you're not just doing it from my point of view. We just watch trailers. You're like, yay, the set's bigger. Yeah. Now we get we get cakes, and <laughs> yeah. hot coffee, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, no, totally. It's just, yeah, like they're just taking everything in their stride, I think, and just trying to improve themselves because each and every time they said, oh, yeah, you know, the next one, this needs to be better or this needs to be better. And you just got to admire that in, in people, I think, who just want to kind of push, push, push and push. So. And they're also doing the thing that a lot of filmmakers don't do, and that's embracing social media. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I think, like, we're trying to get, as quite, like, do the social media thing as much as possible. It's hard to keep on top of, though. Tell me about it. <laughs> it, can, it can be, it's really time consuming, but yeah, it's so important because, you know, how else are you going to like reach people and showcase your stuff if you, if you don't do those sort of things? It's so, so important, but you're really great at doing that. I always see your tweets and stuff. Yeah, and I always, I tend to lose quite a lot, not a lot of followers, but luckily I gain more than I lose, but mm. because of the sheer amount of tweets and links and things that I put out. Yeah. Some people do get annoyed, especially if they're only following like 20 people. It's just me <laughs> clogging up their entire timeline. <laughs> All the way down. <laughs> it's you. But it's it's usually, it's not industry people that go, right, I've had enough of you, because thankfully they seem to appreciate what I do yeah, and no, uh, no, help me out with it. So. Yeah, it's always great. I mean, it's like the, one of those things, isn't it? If you stop doing it for a couple of days and you lose track of it, or a few days and you're just like absent online, it's just like, oh God, I've got so much like to catch up on with the posting and reposting and this and that. Like, even with my own Twitter account, like, you know, it's just, it's hard to keep on top of it all. So when there's all these different accounts for different films and then there's the production account and all this and that like it's just quite hard I guess to yeah it's, I, I went away to New York on holiday with Annette my partner and we came back and it's like right well I'm spending five days doing yeah. you know ten days worth of work so it's just been mega catch up yeah. but it's fun it's like today doing this podcast uh, I'm going to get that edited later on today and then Monday all the new things come out so I'll start working on that but it's uh, yeah. it's fun so I do turn around the editing of podcast pretty quick so by tonight you'll probably see your timeline oh, with the podcast link so exciting. I, uh, it'll go out everywhere so it goes out to iTunes and various Android platforms and right across the planet so. amazing it's my first experience of doing one so thanks for making it so enjoyable I've loved it they're fun I mean some of them I listen to and they are very, very structured. Mm-hmm. And I don't tend to bother with that. I like to have a conversation. As long as there's no massive silences. Which... <laughs> yeah, my poor, awkward pause. Yeah. Or you ask the wrong question. So, the Die Hard movie you're in wasn't in a Die Hard movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, let me just check mine. Yeah, that can go horribly wrong. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, well, it's been, uh, it's been really great, though. Thank you so much. No, you are welcome. So where can people find out more about you, other than the show notes of this podcast? Because I'll type them up for you as well. No, thank you. Um, Well, um, I've not really got a Facebook page or anything like that. So Instagram or Twitter I'm on. Um, It's Becky Fletcher 27 Um, So, yeah, I'm I'm just on those platforms at the minute. That's in between when you're reading lots of scripts and not... (laughs) 
<laughs> not watching Shark Week. Or <laughs> oh my gosh, you'll never catch me watching Shark Week, like ever. Like no, 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 no. Oh, I feel like when people listen to this, I'm just gonna get so much like abuse from shark pictures and stuff now. Especially. Yeah, just block them. <laughs> uh, unless it, unless it's people that are gonna give you film roles. <laughs> Just, just block them. Yeah, that's a block button on Twitter. If they annoy you, just get rid of them. Yeah. So, what you want to do if somebody starts when I go at you for anything, just say, "So, what did you think of the Ghostbusters trailer?" And then they'll go off on a big old rant, and they'll <laughs> join the rest of the crazy people who <laughs> seem to treat that like the world's end. Oh goodness me! <laughs> so crazy. So, what are you up to for the rest of your Sunday? And is um, it exciting or just quiet? You know what? Um, it's quite sunny outside today here in London, so I think I should try and make the most of it because I've not seen a full sunny day like from start to finish at the end of the day for so long. I can't even remember, so I guess I should get out in the garden. Definitely. Get some vitamin D or whatever. Oh, yeah. I, so. Oh, yeah. I think I need to hit the rays and get some sunshine, so... And this uh, this podcast episode is officially the first one of the Fox Trap series as well because the emails have started to come in from other cast members. Oh, they have. That's good news. Yeah, I was going to say, if you needed me to kick any of them up the backside, I would have done, but <laughs> if they're so, fine, that's yep. good. But officially the first episode. So thank you very much, Becky, for taking time out on a Sunday. No worries. Thank All you next. so much yourself. It's been great to speak to you and meet you online. <laughs> Definitely. And in a few hours, watch for the episode coming up. Just share it and let, let your people have a listen to it. And, you know, no sharks. Don't send Becky any shark pictures. It's me. <laughs> Please, no. just, it's just not, it's not right, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Please, no. All right. Will you enjoy your afternoon, Becky? Oh, thank thank you. you for the chat. No worries. Thank you so much. It's been really great to speak to you. And I will catch up with you soon. Yeah, speak to you soon. All right. Take care. Enjoy. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.